All right, so get this. Have you ever thought about like someone just hands you years and years of performance reviews and they're like, here, analyze this person's life. <laughs> it's kind of what we're doing today, just you and me. We've got uh, stacks of these appraisals for a guy named James Hales. And this ah. is not your typical HR file, let me tell you. No kidding. This is like getting a peek behind the curtain, right? Like mm -hmm. we actually get to see how someone's career unfolds year after year. Yeah. And it's not just like, oh, good job. See you next year kind of thing. These are detailed. Right. So we're talking James Hales at this company, ARA. It's a software and engineering firm. He starts as a senior software QA specialist. So he is the gatekeeper of quality, making sure that software actually works before it hits the public. I was going to say the last line of defense before everything goes haywire. Exactly. And from the get go, we see James, he's not just like hitting targets, hmm. he's exceeding them early on. They mention his skill with using these tools like Docker and IntelliJ. Yeah, those are like the power tools of software testing, right? Like mm. you're, you're talking about automating tasks, managing huge code bases that's not just like knowing how to turn on the computer. Right. Not your average tech skills for no, sure. No, not at all. But here's where things get interesting. Hold on to your hats because. Bam, promotion, QA manager. It didn't take long, did it? No, he is on fire, clearly. Well, and you see that a lot in this world, right? Yes. You prove yourself on the technical side, and then that often becomes a springboard into leadership. Yeah. Because it's not just about understanding the software at a certain point. It's about guiding the people who build and test it. And it's almost like they knew, right? They saw that in him because his trajectory is exactly that. Mm -hmm. Deep in the code, one minute, the next minute, he is winning something called the ABCD Award. Okay, Oops. twice. Twice. Are. All right, so that's that's not nothing. Is that is that like employee of the month, or is that something more significant? Yeah, that's Bill T. Okay, so think of it like the MVP award for going above and beyond leadership teamwork. Just incredible dedication to a project. It usually signifies someone who doesn't just get the job done; they elevate the in, entire team while they're doing it. So two times. James is clearly making waves. Yeah, he's making a splash for sure. And it's not just these big splashy awards, right? Scattered throughout these reviews, there's mentions of something called Shipley training and these CMMI activities. Okay. I'm getting corporate jargon vibes, but I bet you it reveals something a little bit deeper about this company, ARA. Oh, for sure. Shipley, that's, that's big in the world of proposal writing, which makes sense if they're doing government contracts, which it seems like ARA is involved in. And then CMMI, that's all about structured processes and quality management. They're serious about delivering top-notch software, clearly. So they've got standards, and James is clearly meeting them, if not exceeding them. Absolutely. All right. So we've got James exceeding expectations, getting promoted left and right, but let's, like, zoom in on what he's actually doing day to day, you know? Yeah. Getting into the weeds a little bit. Exactly, because these reviews mention projects with names like Kitali and Vipo. Okay. Any guesses what those could be? Mm, Vipo. Sounds yeah. like classic government project names to me. Probably acronyms for some complex software systems that ARE is developing. Right. It's all very hush-hush. Got to keep it secure and simple with those acronyms, you know? Right. Exactly. And here's where it gets interesting because you start diving into his work on these projects and you realize software QA, it's not just like clicking buttons and hoping nothing explodes. Oh, no, not at all. It is so much more than that. So what are we talking about here? It's about understanding this whole ecosystem the software lives in, right? It's about finding those pressure points, those weak spots where things could break, and then making sure that the software does exactly what it's supposed to do, especially for that end user, which is often way more complicated than you'd think. And you see that reflected in James's responsibilities. He's not just like logging bugs. He's going to these OUWG meetings. OUWG. Operational user working groups, basically, where the tech folks and the clients get together to, you know, hash things out, make sure everyone's on the same page. Oh, yeah. Those are crucial, especially when you're talking about government clients, because the requirements are always changing. User feedback is king. you got to make sure that software stays on track. And James is right there in the thick of it, gathering that user feedback, even advocating for changes to the software based on what he's hearing from the people who are actually going to be using it. That's like next level customer service, right? It is. And is that user centric approach that often separates a good QA specialist from a great one. He's not just thinking about code. He's thinking about the humans on the other side of the screen. Totally. And remember how we were talking about his leadership skills? Yeah. They shine through here, too. There's this one point where he volunteers to build this whole new test suite for this VAPO software. Okay, a test suite. So basically, think of it like a virtual obstacle course 
for the software you're putting it through his paces. Exactly. And he just takes it upon himself to build this whole thing. It shows real initiative. And not just initiative, but recognizing a need yeah. and proactively addressing it, building a new test suite from the ground up that's not a walk in the park that shows a deep understanding of the software and where its potential weak points might be. And it's not just that he also takes over managing these things called batch scripts from the developers. Okay. It sounds super techy, but it's essentially like automating a bunch of tasks to make everyone's lives a little easier. And he sees that opportunity to improve efficiency and he jumps on it. See, that right there is the mark of a leader in the making, moving beyond your own to-do list and seeing that bigger picture, recognizing where you can add value, even if it's not directly in your job description. And the best part, we see the impact of these actions because there's a comment from his supervisor praising James for stepping up during this project gap and making sure that his team still had work to do and could keep their skills sharp, even though things were kind of slow. He could have just let everyone chill out. Right, exactly. But no, he's like invested in their development even when there's downtime. That speaks volumes about his management style. He's not just trying to check boxes. He's genuinely invested in his team's growth and making sure they're continuously learning. That's the sign of a truly effective leader, someone who empowers the people around them. You know what I love about these reviews? You get these glimpses of James like outside the spreadsheets and software. The human side of things. Yeah, like you see colleagues praising his willingness to mentor junior staff or how he fought to keep the QA team together during a company reorg. I mean, those aren't technical skills, but they speak volumes. Oh, absolutely. It's like finding those hidden passages in a video game, right? Mm. You think you're just following the main quest and then boom, this whole other layer opens up those details. Tell us about James's character, his values. Mm. And that's often what makes the difference between someone who's just good at their job and someone who truly thrives. It's like that secret sauce. Exactly. Like there's this one part where James volunteers to give a presentation about this Keel Core project to all these new hires. He didn't have to do that, but he saw an opportunity to share knowledge, get those newbies up to speed. It shows a real passion for the work. Totally. And it speaks to this theme we see throughout these reviews, this dedication to continuous learning and not just for himself, but for everyone around him. And he walks the walk, right? Like when he gets bumped up to manager, he doesn't just try to wing it. He seeks out management training, wants to make sure he's got the skills to lead effectively. There's that proactive mindset again, mm, right? Yeah. He's not waiting for someone to tell him what to do. Mm -hmm. He's identifying areas where he can grow and then he finds a way to make it happen. And honestly, that's a good lesson for all of us, regardless of what field you're in, right? 100%. It really makes you think though, if someone took all of your performance reviews, what would that story look like? What would those hidden passages reveal about you? Oh, that's a great question. A little scary maybe, yeah. but a good one. Yeah, a little food for thought. Right? Definitely, because James's journey through ARA, it's a fascinating case study, but yeah. it also, it's a bit of a challenge too, isn't it? What do we want to be known for? What impact do we want to have on our colleagues, our mm -hmm. companies, even our entire industries? Such a powerful thought to end on. Big thanks to our listener for sharing these documents with us. This is not something you see every day. Such amazing insight. Really incredible. And for everyone listening, remember the deep dive doesn't stop here. Take those insights, those questions, and apply them to your own journey until next time.